Huh, wonder who's there. Hello? Huh? Oh. Hi there. Let's see what treasures await. Alrighty, we just got this box in. Someone was nice enough to ring my office doorbell to let me know that it arrived. It's a box that I paid $168 for, and it has a mix of untested cameras and camcorders inside of it. So if you're new here, hi, my name's Kevin, uh, and this is Prickly Pear Camera, and I try to do a lot of videos around which I open uh, boxes of mostly untested cameras and camcorders, try to test them, assign some value, uh, based on what I believe I can get for them on sites like eBay, and uh, have a little fun finding some cool nostalgic cameras and camcorders and hopefully they're working and hopefully we can make a profit. Just open the box, this is what it looks like inside. Looks like a pretty good mix of mostly digital cameras. I'll go ahead and set it down here. This is one of my uh, little battery storage areas that I use and has some tapes and stuff to test, some random commonly used batteries try to keep these all charged so I can test them. I'm just checking to see what I got before we start diving into this box. So let's pull out the uh, first item. Kind of dirty looking Canon PowerShot SX110, which is a AA powered uh, digital camera. This camera was actually released when I was in uh, camera sales for a company that I used to work at out of Montana that is now defunct. So what you see often with this, because of the AA batteries, uh, constant pressure pushing downwards actually can cause the posts inside to become a little bit deformed over time and push down too much. So I'm going to try to pry it up a little bit. Try the batteries again. There you, go. you can see it seats a lot better now. So now they're basically even in the battery tray. Normally that'll do the trick. Oops, did I put them in the right way? Power's on. It does sound a little bit uh, noisy, which was the most common complaint that we got from customers with this camera whenever they ended up getting it, as they really liked the optical zoom, which was quite good for its time, 10X optical zoom but the camera noise was pretty high, as is the case with this. We'll go ahead and test it real quick. We'll see if the flash fires. Hmm, flash isn't firing. Isn't firing in any mode. Interesting. It looks like it's not recognizing that the flash is put up, so there may be a weak connection point in there somewhere to do a little more digging on that. It does seem to take pictures, but no flash. And indoors, that can be a bit of an issue with this camera, but it might take outdoor pictures fine. So I'll put that one in the, for me to test a little bit later and I won't assign a value to this one. Okay, whoa. All sorts of cables and cords going on in there. So we got an Olympus uh, SP550UZ which is an 18X, almost bridge-like digital camera released by Olympus around the same time as the last one. Um, I think this uses XD card from memory. Yeah, sure does. I've got an XD card I'll put in here just to test. And these XD cards are different than a regular SD card. Uh, you can see that the size is a little bit smaller both physically and in memory size, these topped out at two gigabytes. This particular one I'm using is 256 megabytes, which depending on the um, how many megapixels the camera is, can hold anywhere from uh, a couple dozen to a couple hundred pictures. And this one uses just regular AA batteries. The battery compartment looks clean. That's normally the biggest issue that you see with a camera like this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn it on. Hopefully it'll turn on. Nice. Looks to be in pretty decent condition. It says format the card. Ooh, didn't like that memory card for some reason. Let's try that again. Okay, I'm formatting the card. 
And when you format the card inside the camera for an older Olympus or Fujifilm camera, sometimes that process, depending on the card size, can take anywhere from 10 to 10 seconds to a couple minutes, actually. This is a smaller size card, so it won't take quite as long. There we go. So we're gonna try to take a picture with the flash firing. The flash button is here on the side, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit that button. Pop the flash, and take a picture. Okay, took a picture. Flash didn't fire, but I don't have it in a manual mode, so let's try it down here. Yeah, flash fires. Taking pictures, and this camera's in uh, pretty good shape. Zoom is working well. It's reading the memory card fine. So just clean the lens glass off a little bit. And this camera in good working condition. I sell this normally a few times a month. Uh, the, work, the value on this camera is gonna be right around $40. And I'm using a little notebook here just to write down the working cameras so I can record them in a spreadsheet a little bit later. I have to do taxes and all that stuff on all of this. This is my full-time job, uh, crazily enough, is buying and selling mainly cameras and lenses. And I've been doing it full-time now for seven years. Okay, next camera, Nikon Coolpix S3100. This is a widely produced uh, 14 megapixel camera that Nikon released 10 or 12 years ago now. Um, has a decent optical zoom of 5X. I've sold hundreds of these over the years in a variety of colors. Uses the Nikon ENL19 battery, and I've got a charged one here. Camera looks to be in good physical condition. Uh, menu power's on. Let's see if the lens moves out. Zoom looks to be working fine. No strange noises. Let me try taking a picture real quick. So yeah, this camera's in uh, good working condition. If you pair this with a charger and a memory card, you're looking at a value of about $45 on this camera. So I've done quite a few of these videos lately and uh, recently completed a really giant order of $2,000 of untested cameras and uh, just was massive and took a really long time to go through and pulled some really cool cameras out of it. Um, and this box is looking pretty good so far. Uh, we've got a Canon PowerShot A1400, uh, really small pocketable uh, digital camera with 5X optical zoom. This was one of Canon's last widely produced, uh, kind of more budget price point digital cameras that use AA batteries. So normally what I found on a lot of the untested camera box orders that I've received is, normally you're looking at a, I'm looking at an average success rate of having a working camera of maybe every other camera is broken or has some sort of issue with it and the other half work. But some cameras, as you saw, some boxes were more like 80% worked and some were more like 30% worked. So on average, I would say every other camera would work. This just has normal wear, no issues with the lens. You're looking at a value of about $85 on the Canon PowerShot A1400. This was in superb condition with a box. I've seen that go for more like 100, 125. So this box is already at 170. So we already hit the price that I paid for this box around 165 which is kind of crazy so we're already at the kind of the bare minimum threshold that we want to be at and anything on top of that will contribute to any profit I would be able to make on this and some of these cameras depending on their scarcity and value or lack of scarcity and value uh, can take a couple days to a couple months or even a year or two to sell yeah Sony NP BG1 battery and this is a Sony DSC W55 camera, which has gotten very popular over the last probably year or two since the pandemic. Um, there's been quite a few uh, YouTube videos about it that I've seen, and I was wondering why the value kept going up on these. And I think in previous videos, we've had this in silver and pink. So the, the biggest issues that you see with this are uh, dead pixels and the lens often can have a bit of noise. This one does have a little bit of noise, but it looks like it's operating somewhat normally. There does appear to be a little bit of backlight issues on the LCD, so there's a little bit of uh, color distortion on the far right side. Picture took good, 
and camera appears to be in decent working condition. So I would just get a Memory Stick Pro uh, Duo, which I have right here. Yeah, so I just put in a one gig uh, Memory Stick Pro Duo and it's reading just fine. So this camera actually has surprising value. Um, I've sold a few of these over the last few weeks and I have a link down below to my eBay store. Uh, normally I try to post the things that I have videos of within a week or two of when the video goes live. So hopefully I have this live pretty soon. Normally these do sell pretty quickly. I think the last two I have were in worse condition than this and the values were around 6570. So I'm gonna go ahead and peg a value on this one to uh, 65 for the Sony DSC W55. Okay, next thing, we've got a Samsung Hi8 SCL906 uh, camcorder, which is using a Hi8 tape. I do not have a charger for this Samsung battery, um, so I will need to test this one later so it won't assign a value. The general success rate on camcorders like this that aren't Sony or Canon, generally fairly low. So I'm looking at like Samsung and Sharp um, and other brands like that, normally like a 25% success rate. Sometimes they don't power on. A lot of the times the, uh, the tape mechanism isn't working properly, it's not ejecting properly, it's not reading the tape properly. Um, so there's a lot of things that can go wrong with units like this. So normally I don't seek these out, they kind of come along for the ride of whatever else the box in includes. So I will not assign a value to that for now. There's a lot of stuff in here. This is, uh, this looks promising. Nikon Coolpix S9100, which is a compact, pretty good optical zoom camera. Uh, 18x optical, actually. And this is a neat camera. It uses the Nikon ENL12 battery. There's this guy here. And condition-wise, actually looks quite good. So I'm hopeful. Let's see if I got a battery in here. Got the battery here. Plug her in. I'm gonna hold down the battery for the Nikon or the on off button a little bit longer than with a lot of other models. It's got a little carabiner on it, so that might be the noise that you hear there. Opens fine. The biggest issue I see with cameras like this, it's a really cool camera actually, is lens issues because of the optical zoom. If you drop it when it's extended, can cause a lot of mechanical problems and cause lens errors. The second biggest thing I see with these are lens glass scratches, which is common with a thinner. Uh, longer optical zoom cameras. So this one zoom appears to be working fine. I'm going to test the flash real quick. Uh, this camera is in good working condition and the value with a memory card and a charger is going to be around $50 for the Nikon Coolpix S9100. Next camera we've got here is a Sony DSC H55 in silver. And I believe this was also available in black. Uses the Sony NP-BG1 battery. Got a number of those here. Sony used that in a, a wide variety of camera models, so it makes testing these a little bit easier than other cameras. And that's what it looks like. The cosmetic condition actually looks pretty decent. So I'm hopeful that maybe, uh, maybe we'll get lucky. It does turn on. Biggest issue I see with this camera is a lot of splotchiness on the LCD and dark splotches. Um, See so yeah, how this one, this one actually looks pretty good. The lens is moving in and out fine, it appears. It looks like the zoom toggle is actually very, um, gets stuck and is quite loose. So that's something I don't have to check. Um, okay, yeah, flash fires. Lens looks decent. If the, there wasn't the zoom toggle issue with the charger, you'd be looking at a value about 40. Uh, I'm going to assign a value on this of about 20 because of the zoom toggle issue, unless I can get it fixed. Okay, next camera. In a tiny little Lopro case here. Let's see what we got inside. Kodak. Kodak EasyShare M1033. Must be in pretty decent condition. Uses the Kodak KLIC 7004 battery. And I think this is the Fuji NP50 battery as well. Uh, I do have a few of those. I believe I actually have one in here, maybe. 
Yeah, wow. Got a replacement battery here. It's nice, I moved all my uh, most common batteries that I use over here right off. Oh, you can kind of see it here. There's a lot of batteries and stuff in here as well as right over here. Makes the time to shoot these videos a little bit quicker so I don't have to get up and down a lot. Uh, camera looks good, lens is moving in and out fine. I'm gonna test the flash real quick. Yeah, flash fires. This camera is actually in quite good condition. Clearly it wasn't used very much. It was released, I think, 10 or 12 years ago. Uh, 10 megapixel camera. And uh, yeah, this is, this is in really quite nice shape. So if you do have, if I were to find a charger for this and pair it with a small memory card, uh, value on this camera is gonna be about $35. Okay, next camera, Nikon Coolpix L18, which is a AA powered uh, digital camera. Released by Nikon, kind of similar time frame, probably 10 or 12 years ago. Biggest thing you see is issue with the battery door in these types of cameras, and you can see that it is a little bit loose. Sometimes that does affect the performance of the camera and ability to power on. In this case, it appears to power on fine. Just took a picture. Let me get the flash up. Yeah, flash fires. So the value on the Nikon Coolpix L18, if you pair this with like a memory card, even with the slightly loose battery door, is gonna be right around $30. So $30 for that. All right, next camera, Casio Exilim. EXZS5 in pink, and it uses the Casio NP80 battery. Oh, yep, turns on. So it turns on. Um, lens looks decent, just has a little bit of dust. See if the pictures turn out okay. Took a picture. See if I can get the flash to fire. Yep, flash fires. Nice, just in time for Mother's Day. I said that on the last pink ones I get. The pink color does add some value uh, normally. And uh, this is a good little digicam. Value on this with a memory card and a like a replacement charger. Uh, is gonna be in the 35 to 40 dollar range. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll assign a value of 35 to that. So nothing uh, too glamorous so far, but a lot of this stuff are cool uh, working cameras now that I'm able to kind of get back into the hands of people that'll actually use them. So there is some satisfaction that comes with doing this kind of thing, for me at least. Looking for a Sony NPBN1. This is a Sony DSCW800, which was one of Sony's most popular cameras that they ever sold. And I think they're selling the Sony DSCW830 now, which is a, a decent digital camera as well. Here it is. I don't know if this is the. Sony made a special type of battery that more works with the Sony DSCW800 and this is just a slightly older Sony battery so I'm hopeful that we can kind of go through the testing process at least see if it's working fine oh nice yeah LCD has some wear and I think those are actually scratches yeah those are actual scratches so definitely a fair amount of wear um, let me go ahead and test and see if we can get the flash to fire during a... yep flash fire is fine so yeah, this camera's working. I'll just get it cleaned up. You can see it's got a little bit of stickiness on the front here, maybe from sticker residue. So I would go through uh, and put this through the cleaning process and pair it with a memory card and a replacement charger value on this camera in its current condition is gonna be around 65. In better condition, that value the, would go up to probably over 100. Okay, so that camera I think our running total now we're at around 470 for this box so far that we paid that I paid uh, 164. So it's looking really good. 
uh, Sony DSC W170, which is an older 10 megapixel Sony uh, digital camera. Also uses a Sony NPPT1 battery, and I happen to have one here. And put her in there. Okay, it's missing the blue battery latch that's inside here that would actually hold the battery. So normally these cameras will also work without the battery latch with the battery door applying pressure to the battery. And in this case, it looks to have actually maybe caused some problems because now the battery door is open. So it's loose, very, very loose. Yeah, it takes a picture. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a little more work on that one, but it does have a, what appears to be a scratch on the lens glass and then that battery door is just about to break. So won't assign a value to this. In good working condition, the value of this camera is around 50 bucks actually. Okay, next camera, looks like a Kodak, yeah. Kodak EasyStare C182. Get this camera in quite a bit and a lot of lots like this. Um, kind of a compact uh, 12 megapixel digital camera, widely produced. This was kind of during the heyday of more affordable um, digicams. Okay. Moves in and out fine. A little bit of wear and general tackiness. Definitely cameras had a fair amount of use over the years. Lens appears to be moving in and out fine. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do a test picture real quick. Yeah, took a picture. I'll try to do it with the flash. Yeah, flash fires. So camera's working fine. LCD has a fair amount of wear. Uh, so value on this, given its condition, uh, I would say it's gonna be about $30. Okay, Sony Cybershot DSC H9 15x optical zoom. Uh, neat camera. Uses the Sony NPPG1 battery. I've got right here. And I'm going to throw a memory stick in as well. Uses a memory stick Pro Duo. Just so we can test it. Does power on. Promising start. Promising start, young Padawan. Lens moves out. Oh, and it's on night shot. I didn't know this camera had night shot. I was like, why does everything look like uh, Blair Witchy? It's that kind of uh, Blair Witch look where you can kind of use that to shoot in darker situations. I didn't know this had that. That's kind of fun. Let's uh, pop the flash and see if the flash fires. So this is a camera I see quite a bit of. Um, also the Sony DSC H5 and H7. Yeah, flash fires. Camera's in pretty pretty decent shape and is working fine with that memory card. Uh, the value on this camera in uh, good working condition is gonna be about 45 bucks. Oh, hot dang. Canon GL2. This was in uh, one of my last lots that I got uh, from that same supplier, actually. So I just got, I'm getting a battery in for this. It should be here in the next few days, and hopefully we'll be able to give this a test along with the other GL2. But in good working condition, tape tested with a mini DV tape, the value on this uh, can be upwards of $150 to $200. Uh, pretty neat uh, mini DV camcorder, quite popular. Um, Looks to be in quite good shape, honestly, at least cosmetically, so I'm hopeful. I'll assign a value of this untested right now for 50, um, because that's probably what we could get in untested or for parts condition, uh, if it's not tested, but hopefully, hopefully we can get it working. But for just 50 bucks on that one for now. Okay, next camera, Casio EXZ9. And this uses the Casio kind of wide, NP60 battery. I don't have a charger for that at the present time. So we'll have to test this one later. Um, but in decent working condition, a camera like this would probably have a value of maybe $25 or $30 without a charger. Okay, ooh, Canon PowerShot A2300. This is a nice uh, 
Nice, uh, nice find. The, the value on these is normally over a hundred bucks in good working condition. So hopefully it is. I think I have a bad one. It uses the Canon NB11L uh, battery. Okay, I just put the battery in and it does power on. Let's see if it takes a picture. Lens a little bit noisy, kind of common with this camera. I've sold a heck of a lot of these over the years, probably over a hundred. Also comes in a black color. Flash fires. So this camera's in good condition. No, uh, There's no memory card in there. That's why I just made that noise. To get it cleaned up a little bit. Uh, value on this camera actually is quite good. Um, I'm gonna assign a value of $100 with a USB cable and a card. A Canon A2300. This box has been fantastic so far. Very unusual amount of working cameras to non-working cameras. Ooh, I, I spoke too soon. What can I say? We've got corrosion in the battery compartment um, and that one looks pretty bad. So I will be able to get that battery out hopefully and we'll be able to test this in the cleaning process that I'm gonna do in a video that's upcoming. Uh, this is a Fujifilm AX300, which is a pretty popular AA powered digicam. Uh, in good working condition, this is normally 35 to 45 with a card, so I won't assign, assign any value. All right, next camera. Ooh, Olympus FE46. I've had a few of these uh, and similar models in the last few videos, and I've had a few viewers buy them, so appreciate that. Um, it's kind of cool that uh, you're getting in the hands of, of people that are looking to add to their collection or looking for a specific uh, model. Hmm, flash isn't firing. Also, the LCD has a bunch of what looks like internally dead pixels. So there's a ton of, um, maybe I can do a white background there. You can see it. It's got a lot of, uh, a lot of problems there, unfortunately. So we'll work on that one a little bit. If this was in good working condition, the value of this would be 25 to 35. So I won't assign a value to it for now. Okay, next camera. Nikon Coolpix L24, 14 megapixel digital camera. Quite a bit of corrosion. Oh, fully, fully corroded with oxidation in the battery tray there. So this one's gonna require some additional work. We'll see if we can get it into working condition. Might be too far gone. The zoom toggle switch also appears to be quite sticky, so I won't assign a value to that, but in good working condition, normally the value of this is 30 to 35. Okay, Sony DSC W330. Very common. We're getting a lot of like in that 8 to 14 megapixel cameras in this video, which is kind of cool. That one looks good. Uses the Sony NPBN1 battery. Biggest issue I see with this camera is lens issues and hot spotting on the LCD. And this camera actually looks good. I'm gonna take a picture real quick, test the flash. This is in uh, good working condition. If you pair this with a memory card, uh, it does have a little bit of wear on the top. It's in fine working condition. If you pair this with a memory card and a charger, you're looking at a value of right in that 40 to $45 range. I say 45 with a card. Ooh, Canon PowerShot Elf 100. Nice. This is a cool camera. Uses the Canon NB4L battery. I've got some of those in here. Looks to be in good physical condition. Came in a wide variety of colors. Sold it in silver, green, pink, blue. I don't know if they made it in black. Power's on, looks to be working fine. I do see a few horizontal lines of dead pixels on the rear LCD. And if you look at the auto, you can actually see it in the auto. There's just a handful of lines in the very upper part of the screen, right here. So normally that doesn't affect the actual picture quality, it's just on the display. But it is something that you would wanna note if you were to sell something like this, like I am, and it is something that will unfortunately affect the value. 
with the LCD display issue, that will affect the value, like I said. Um, and the value on this camera with the LCD issue, you're looking at a value still of pretty good, uh, of around 50 bucks on that one. Maybe more. I'll sign 50 on the kind of conservative side because it's, it's working just fine. All right, next camera, Sony DSC W350. Very similar to W330, uses the same battery. Power's on. Flip it over to still pictures. Oh, the display's on. Oh, the menu button. Oh, there we go. Menu button's like really weird. Looked like it got displaced at some point. There we go. Weird. Oh, it moves like spins freely. That's really annoying. I haven't seen that before. It's like it got like recessed a little bit from from the housing. I'm still gonna test it and see if it takes pictures fine. Yep. That's weird. Yeah, I've never seen that. And I've sold a lot, hundreds of variations of this camera and similar models. So that will affect the value. Took pictures fine, LCD is quite worn. So I'm gonna sign a value with the the toggle wheel issue, not toggle wheel, the menu dial issue um, of about uh, $20 here. In good working condition with a charger, you're looking more like 50. Ooh, nice. Kodak Easy Share uh, C1530. It uses AA cameras. It uses AA batteries. I put them in right. Oh, corrosion in the rear, the front looks fine, as you can see there. But um, fortunately, there is uh, corrosion inside of one of the connection points. So that one doesn't even power on. Try to work on that one later. No value there. Ooh, this one's cool. Canon PowerShot A1100 in pink. Also double A camera. Battery tray actually looks good. Love to see it. Really love to see it. Power's on, lens looks good. Just the display. If you power it on and immediately see a black screen, it's because it's set to the viewfinder, which it does have a little tiny optical viewfinder, which is nice if you're shooting outdoors. It's a cool camera. Cool camera. Yep, flash fires. Nice. So this is in uh, good working condition with a USB cable. You're looking at a value on this of about $60, and that the pink color does definitely add some value on this camera. Um, it's a cool camera. Really, really like this. And again, was in camera sales when that guy came out. Man, there's a lot of cameras in here. Nikon Coolpix S210, which is a camera that uses the Nikon ENL10 battery. And I've got some replacement guys here. In the plum color, which is their version of purple. Noisy lens, common with this camera. Kind of a limited uh, 3X, I think. Yeah, 3X optical. Very popular, though. And uh, very popular still as a often purchased Digicam. If you pair this with a small size memory card, um, you're looking at a value of this camera of about $35. It does have some wear around the ring. LCD looks good, just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So, say value on the Nikon Coolpix S210 of 35 Okay, got a Canon PowerShot case. Neat. I'm a vintage -y looking case. And we've got a Canon PowerShot SD300 inside. Hey, little buddy. Uses the Canon MB4L battery. I've used so many of those today, I need to go uh, get a couple charged ones real quick. This is a four megapixel Digicam. Got a little viewfinder on it too. 
Nice. Yeah, it's actually in pretty good condition. Got a little bit of tape residue on the front, but uh, LCD looks good. So uh, this looks promising. And this is a pretty popular uh, point and shoot digital camera that was made, gosh, close to maybe 20 years ago now. Really expensive when it came out too. Um, but pretty well built to have lasted for that long and still work just fine. The Canon SD300 value paired with a charger and a card, like a small 128 megabyte card, you're looking at a value there of about $40. The values that I give, again, I've said this in almost all my videos, hopefully, is I know a lot of you are just collectors yourselves um, and like to use cameras, and I do that as well. I have quite a few that I keep for myself and I use, um, but I gotta pay the bills, and to do that, I have to sell some cameras. So um, I still have some on my shelf. I've got a SD790 up there, uh, SD1000 that works just fine here, the old Ty Curry SD1000 uh, sticker. So I try to uh, try to bust those out and use them from time to time as well. We've got cactus flowers blooming right now um, everywhere in my front yard. So I'll include a picture of one of those right here uh, or throw it up on the screen right now. Just beautiful for people with allergies are having a hard time. But man, every, everything is blooming. The ocotillos, the cactus, uh, Palo Verdes, everything. So it's kind of a cool time because it brings out the bees and the hummingbirds and the cardinals, so there's stuff everywhere to see. It's really cool. It is starting to get kind of toasty, so that is the only downside. Okay, Nikon Coolpix S70, and when I saw that I immediately noticed it looked pretty sticky. So with this type of residue that you see, it's like the delamination or whatever they had protecting the inside just kind of wore off, and it gets super sticky. So I will go ahead and test this and we'll see if it works. It uses the Nikon ENL 12 battery. And hopefully I'll just be able to get that cleaned up. And it does turn on. Uses a touch screen. Nope. Okay, cool. Let's see, it uses, uh, actually uses the LCD screen to zoom. So if you're looking for a camera that's great for outdoors use, this may not be the camera. No uh, viewfinder on this. Took a picture with the flash find. So camera does appear to be working fine. I don't see any uh, other issues with it, apart from the super stack, uh, sticky and tacky uh, front here. So once, if I'm able to get that cleaned up and we sell this, uh, the value on this is actually gonna be probably 20, 25. Uh, in really good shape with all the original accessories in a box that can actually sell for pretty good money. Uh, Kodak Z1015, which is a 15X kind of bridge-like digital camera, uses this long slender guy here, CP9 I think, oh KLIC 8000, yeah that's right. I don't have a charger for that, so I'm going to have to test that one later. Value on this camera normally is in the 30 to $40 range. Um, so. I'll try to find a charger for that and we'll test it later, but won't assign a value to it for now. Ooh, got another Sony Cybershot down here. Sony DSC W55 in pink. Wow. This is uh, proving to be pretty nice. Sony MPBG1 battery. Condition looks similar to the last pink one that I got. Power's on. Lens looks good. Lens moves out and in, out and in. Takes a picture, let's try it with a flash. Yep, flash fires, nice. So the value on this guy, um, with a charger and perhaps a memory card, you're looking at value about 65 on this, and I've sold this camera a lot. So Sony DSC W55. Just cracked a thousand, I think, with that camera. So this box is turning out to be really good so far. Uh, got another Nikon, same camera. Nikon Coolpix S210. Got a little bit of a scratch on the front. Uses the Nikon ENL10 battery. The battery latch is missing. 
the outer latch looks to be holding it in fine and normally it shouldn't affect the functionality of the camera but it does affect the value so the lens is moving in and out okay a little bit noisy quite noisy common for this camera I'll delete the pictures on here okay so that's gonna affect the value quite a bit I'm gonna do a value of just twenty dollars on this given the battery door and battery latch issue not uh, Panasonic Lumix DMC FX01 and this uses a kind of a beefy battery which is the CGA S005 and I don't have a charged battery for that now so I will try to find a charger and get this one charged uh, value on this little guy I think it's like five megapixels maybe um, is not super high uh, normally 20 to 25 so I won't assign a value on that for now Nikon Coolpix S8100 super tacky sticky rubber one of the most common issues that you see with this camera also is separating on the top so it doesn't look very promising uses the Nikon ENL 12 battery so I have a small impact mark on the front so this guy's got some serious issues so I'll try to work on that and see if we can get it operable. Um, value on this, if it was in good working edition, would be in the $40 to $50 range, but fortunately no value on that guy for now. Got a camera in a bag here. Uh, Fuji Film. FinePix uh, T400. Got a battery for that. Uses the FinePix NP45 battery. Got one of those right here. Ta-da! This box has been really, uh, really quite good so far. There we go. Hmm, looks good. So, T400 in red. Got a decent optical zoom here of like, what, 8 or 10? 10x. So that's pretty decent. Takes a picture. 16 megapixels. Uh, so pair this with a memory card. It looks like it's got a cable and some other accessories in there. Uh, and for this camera, you're looking at a value of about 35. We've got two Canon power shots. Two Canon power shot, one A3100, one A2200. Both of them use the Canon NB8L battery, which I do not have a charger for right now. I need to get. Um, so I will have to test these a little bit later, but uh, widely produced uh, Canon PowerShot models. Uh, value on these in good working condition is anywhere from normally $30 to $75, depending on the model and the color. Um, so hopefully we'll get those tested and working, but don't have a working battery to test, so won't assign a value to them for now. What do we got in here? Canon PowerShot SD1200 in a box. Hopefully it's in there. It's got the charger. We've got a case. Yeah, it is. In gray. Ooh, looks to be in pretty good shape, too. Little den ding on the front. Let's see if the battery included works. Nope. Yeah, it's kind of exciting to make another video. I haven't made one in a while. Appreciate all your, everyone's comments and uh, ideas and thoughts. As I'm relatively new on the YouTube career or my YouTube experience. Uh, it's been fun so far. Oh. So, lens looks decent. Camera lens is moving in and out fine. Often with this camera, you'll have some lens issues. This one looks good. I'm going to test the flash. Uh, also, see a lot of dead pixels in this camera for whatever reason. Normally, that doesn't affect the picture quality at all, it's just on the display. And this camera is in fine, good working condition, apart from that little ding on the front, which doesn't affect the performance. It's got some accessories, manual, so I'll include all of that. And value with the box on this camera, you're looking at a value of probably 85, maybe up to 100. I'll just do 85 for now. Pretty dang good. Just got a few, well, we've got a few left. Another Nikon, Nikon Coolpix S570. So missing the battery door, latch, latch key. 
we'll see if we can get this to work with just the yeah the outer door shield. Yeah, power's on. Just sold one of these in black in really fair condition, quite a bit of wear. Um, this one cosmetically looks a little bit better. I think it sold for 25 or 30. Uh, lens moves in and out fine. We'll see if the flash fires. Okay, flash fires. Uh, this camera in red with a charger and a memory card, you're looking at a value of about $40 on that. Neat camera. We've got a Sony DSC W570. Uh, 16 megapixel uses a Sony NPBN1 battery. That's good. Uh, there appears to be. Oh, there's a black spot on the LCD. So that's common with this camera, is a darkish spot on the LCD. The thing you want to check is make sure it's not in the sensor. So I would take a test picture, which I'll take right now, and then you can view it on the computer and just make sure that uh, it's not uh, actual dust in the sensor that's causing some issues. So I'll output that picture and test just to make sure. But this is definitely more in that fair condition given the overall wear and wear to the LCD screen. You're looking at a value of this camera in its current condition of about $30. Okay, Kodak EasyShare uh, M763 with the lens stuck out. This is the KLIC 7001, I think. Yeah. Try to keep some of those charged because there's a lot of codecs that use that. A lot of the times this camera, when it's been stuck out like that, it has some sort of lens error. Sometimes they just get accidentally turned on and then never turned off and they get stuck out. Depending on the settings that it had, this one is not actually powering on, so definitely it's got some issues, so no value on this one. Panasonic Lumix uh, DMC TS3 with a cracked LCD. This is a waterproof, tough digital camera. Fortunately, the crack may affect things, but it looks to actually be, I don't know, maybe internal. This is actually, Panasonic makes some really neat digital cameras. I used to use the DMC TS5 and TS10 when they came out. Oh, this one's got water damage inside too. So a lot of corrosion on the USB port, as you can see. So someone maybe didn't seal it properly and water got inside. So this guy's probably a lost cause. I'll do a little more testing to see if I can get it to work, but probably not. In good working condition without the crack value on this is 50 to 75. Kodak EasyShare CD72. I think we already had one of these. I'm pretty sure we did. AA powered camera. We had a few duplicate models in here. Lens cover doesn't fully open when turned on. Lens moves in and out fine. Try the flash. Flash fires. So I'm gonna turn off the lens again and see if the lens cover shuts. And it does. We'll try to turn it on again. It turns on. So sometimes if a camera hasn't been used in a while, you'll see that. So I like to turn it on and off a few times just to make sure. This one's in good working condition, actually. And value of this camera with a memory card, you're looking at about $35 in good working condition. Okay, we've got a Kodak P880. Kind of a cool, uh, cool Kodak camera with a manual adjustment of the lens for zoom. Pretty neat, not a whole lot of cameras had that. Um, Canon PowerShot Pro 1. Also, similar time frame came out with that. Uh, this uses the Kodak KLIC 5001 battery. Given their size, these batteries actually tend to hold their charge pretty well. Okay, just turn on. What was, why did it turn on? Oh, it's set to on. The on off is actually right next to the shutter button, which is a little bit unusual. Always takes me a little while to uh, get familiar with the camera. I haven't used it in a, f a fair amount of time. Let's go ahead and test this guy. Takes a picture. 
Let's see if the flash fires. Fill flash. Yep. Cool. Yeah, it's in good shape. Kind of a neat, neat, uh, neat lens too. I like that. I like that. So this camera uh, used value uh, is gonna be in the 35 to $40 range. So I'll go ahead and just say 35 for now. See if I can muster up a charger for it. Might add a little bit of value. Okay, last camera. Last camera, we've got a Canon PowerShot uh, SD850 digital camera. Uh, nice metal body, kind of heavy built to last camera. Uses the Canon NB5L battery. Sold this camera quite a bit over the years. Not a battery here. This battery was used in a lot of Canon PowerShot, like the S95, S100 as well. Lens error, restart camera. Also has a few clusters of dead, LC, dead pixels on the LCD. So this guy's got some issues, clearly. Bummer. So last camera not working. In good working condition, this camera would have had a value of in the 40 to $75 range. So that's kind of a bummer. We'll see. I, doubtful that I can get that thing working though. So that kind of finishes the, the box. Uh, I show that we just crossed over $1,300. So for an investment of 160, uh, definitely a good, uh, good return on investment there. Uh, I hope to have a few more videos out soon. Uh, but as always, thank you for watching and uh, stay tuned for the next one.